Good morning, Covenant Glen. God bless you. Uh, this is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in this day. Uh, before we get started, I just want to just take care of a few announcements. Don't forget, we're on our 40-day fast as a church. I do trust and pray that the fast is going well. Uh, I encourage you to take this journey with us. And during our Lenten fast, uh, keep in mind that uh, every night during the weekday, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., you can call our prayer line and someone will be there to pray with you. You don't have to say a word, but if you choose to say something, if you have a prayer request, I want you to feel free. But every night during the weekday, Monday through Friday at 8 o'clock, while we're on our fast, uh, you can call the prayer line. Go to our website. It gives you, there's a link on the website that gives you all the ways to fast. Amen? All the ways to fast. Also, Christian education after worship and virtual teleconference. Don't forget about our noon Bible study fellowship on Wednesdays uh, with Minister Lewis Campbell. And also Wednesday Bible studies. Uh, every we, uh, Wednesday night at 7 p.m., we're dealing with peace, peace in turbulent times. And then every Monday night, our singles Bible study, led by Reverend Claude Roop, uh, begins at 6.30 on Mondays. Uh, also, this was the day that we are uh, was kicking off our first spirit campaign, our first spirit campaign of the year. However, uh, we have been adjusting uh, for the last 12 months. It's been about a year of adjustments for everybody on just about every level. So our spirit campaign, we're moving to Resurrection Sunday, which is the first Sunday, the first Sunday in April. Amen. Our building project is going extremely well. I want to thank you for your prayers as God is leading us through this process. Uh, you know, this is, these are interesting times in which we live. We have the governor uh, uh, opening up the state this week, which many of us totally disagree with. We have the vaccine that's out there. The virus is still uh, uh, doing its thing. I want Dr. Odili to come just for a few minutes, and uh, he is an awesome, awesome, awesome doctor and entrepreneur. He's my doctor, for one, let me say that. Uh, has two wonderful practices here uh, uh, in the Houston area and surrounding area. And he's also an accomplished uh, author. And I thank God for this young man who's doing an awesome, awesome work in the community, but also God got great things in store for him, even as an entrepreneur. Come on, just receive him just for a few minutes. Good morning, Covenant Glen. Uh, how are y'all doing? I'm Dr. Odilly. I want to thank you, uh, Pastor Childress, for inviting me to come and talk to you guys today. I'm going to talk briefly about responsibility. Now, first and foremost, as you all saw, I still am wearing a mask on a regular basis. Everyone here today is doing the same. Despite what the politicians and people in leadership are telling us, that we don't need to wear these and that we can safely gather, uh, we're counting on all of you to remain responsible that you still have to protect yourselves and protect your loved ones. We are not at a herd immunity state. I encourage everyone to go and get vaccinated. I have been vaccinated. If you are in line to get vaccinated, please take the opportunity to do so. Uh, if not, wait your turn. We have 100,000 vaccines coming to the state for more people to get vaccinated through CVS and uh, other centers. Uh, so please line up or sign up, go online, do what you need to so that you can get vaccinated. Once a sufficient number of people are vaccinated, then we can you know, safely remove the masks, at least around adults. It's still going to be a year or so before the children are vaccinated, but we uh, definitely want to encourage you. All three vaccines are safe. I have no uh, misgivings about any of the vaccines. I think that everyone should get vaccinated uh, as soon as they can. Uh, the other aspect of responsibility I'm here to talk about is financial responsibility. And uh, this book that I've recently released, it's actually number one in three different categories on Amazon.com as a new release uh, in, the, in its categories of uh, financial guidance and self-help. 
Uh, this book is called Organic Seeds of Greatness, Free Yourself. It is a guide that contains a lot of the financial wisdom uh, that me and some of my business associates have put together, things that we've learned over the years. Uh, this book is aimed at millennials, but definitely has a lot of information that's applicable to everyone. It talks about life insurance, it talks about savings vehicles, bonds, and stocks, and at what point in your life you should be investing in each one of these. Uh, so definitely you can start reading for free online, but it's important that we teach our young people, we teach the next generation, all the things that it took us decades to learn. All that information is included in this book, and I want to share it with you. I'm going to leave some copies here for you, uh, but definitely it's available online on Amazon.com. It's important that uh, together as a people, we move toward financial freedom. Uh, instead of spending, you know, we need to be approaching the situation where we're leaving wealth behind to uh, the next generation. Uh, so we want to uh, you know, take the lessons that we as adults have learned and pass them on to the next generation. Uh, but again, uh, it's very important that everyone wear their mask. Uh, the time for uh, getting rid of this is not here. Uh, we still need to be wearing our masks, protecting ourselves, and being responsible. Thank you so much. Y'all have a blessed morning. Hallelujah. We just want to praise you forever and ever.
come on let the church say amen let us say amen again god bless you as you remain standing the lord requests the honor of your presence to come to his table and to partake of the sacraments the lord be with you lift up your heart we lift them up to the lord let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right that we should always and everywhere give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who rose victorious from the dead and comforts us with the blessed hope of everlasting life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn. Come on and repeat after me. Holy, holy, holy. God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. For holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death. You made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. For when the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word, but most of all, in the power of the Holy Spirit. For on the night in which he gave himself up for us, the Bible said that he took bread. When he took the bread in his hand, he gave thanks to you. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this as often as you can in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, the Bible said that he took the cup. When he took the cup in his hand, he gave thanks to you, O oh God, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness and the remission of our sins. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, Lord, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of the faith. Come on and just repeat after me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. And Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ. That we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. And Lord, by your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in communion with all of your saints. And finally, by your grace, bring them and all of us to that eternal and blessed table where your saints will feast forever in your heavenly home. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and all glory. Father Almighty is yours, now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let the people of God say together, Amen. The body of Christ. God, we thank you for the meal. We are blessed, cleansed, and strengthened. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As you pass your cups down to the end of your row, the ushers will pick them up. Come on, let's celebrate the meal. Put your hands together. Give God a hand of praise. Amen. I know we are not exchanging signs of peace, 
but just look at your neighbor. Just look at the person behind you, in front of you, amen, and just give them a greeting. Those of you who are watching us by streaming, whoever you're with, embrace your family, amen, in the spirit of fellowship, amen, as we all have sup at the table together. Let the people of God say together, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Well, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Put your hands together and let's bless his name on today. Hallelujah. Somebody said when praises go up, blessings come down. Certainly we want to feel and receive the blessings of the Lord on this morning. Hallelujah. The text says God inhabits the praises of his people. That means God comes around when the people praise him. Yeah. I say it like this, God comes around when praises go down. So we want to praise him this morning. We want to bless his name this morning. The song says, praise is what I do when I want to be close to you. Anybody want to be close to the Father this morning? Well, let's bless his name. Hallelujah.
We serve a good God. We serve an awesome God. church say amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless this praise team, this dynamic duo. Glad to. Sister Roshana Mitchell, God bless you. Greg Daniels, amen. I often tell him he's a bad man. We thank God for his anointing. Come on and pray with me, if you will. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father God in heaven, we thank you so much for this day, this opportunity for the visitation and the dwelling of your Holy Spirit. God, that ministered to our souls. And God, we just come right now just asking that you anoint this word, that somebody's life will be encouraged and blessed. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of every heart that's watching us this morning be holy and acceptable in your precious and loving sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer, let the people of God say together, amen. Come on, lift your Bibles up with me wherever you are, those who are watching us. I want to say to all of our guests who's watching us, you've tuned in. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in, amen, to Covenant Glen's worship service. Those who are here, lift your Bibles up at home. Lift your Bibles up. Repeat after me. This is my Bible. In my Bible is the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing 
by the word of God, I will allow the word of God to convict, convert, change, challenge, and encourage my circumstances and my situations. For I walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Uh, Acts chapter 20, as you remain standing, Acts chapter 20. I just want to read a, uh, uh, a familiar story to some. To some, you might not have ever heard it, but one of my favorite stories in all of Scripture. Uh, Acts chapter 20. Uh, Acts chapter 20. And I'm going to begin reading at verse 7. I will end at verse 12. And I'm going to read this out of the New King James Version of Scriptures. Hear God's word for the people of God. Now, on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. And there were many lamps in the upper room where they were gathered together. And in a window, a certain young man named Eutychus, uh, who was sinking into a deep sleep, he was overcome by sleep, and as Paul continued speaking, he fell down from the third story and was taken up dead. But Paul went down. Let me say that again. But Paul went down, fell on him, embracing him, said, Do not trouble yourselves, for his life is in him. Now, when he had come up, had broken bread and eaten and talked a long while, even till daybreak, he departed. And they brought the young man in alive. And they were not a little comforted. For this is God's word for the people of God. Now, look at your neighbor at home and those who are here. Look at your neighbor. Say, it's the comeback that counts. Tell somebody, it's not how you start. It's how you finish. It's the comeback that counts. And everybody in here, amen, you have a comeback story. All of us are going to have a comeback story coming out of this pandemic, right? Amen. You all may be seated, if you will. Someone said losers, losers quit when they are tired. Winners quit when they won. The race is not given to the swift, and neither is the battle given to the strong, but they that endure until the end. That legendary football coach, Vince Lombardi, uh, arguably the best coach to ever coach in the National Football League, said that a winner never quits, and a quitter never wins. But amen, the greatest quote is when Jesus said, you should always pray and not faint. Faint means to quit. So if you're praying, you can't quit. But if you stop praying, you'll quit. So whenever you find yourself giving up, that means you'll stop praying because when you pray, prayer won't let you quit. Henry Ford says, failure is not the end, but only a place to begin again. So my word for somebody today, and I want to drop this in your spirit because this is my mantra, amen, ever since we've been on this fast and really throughout this entire pandemic, and that is, I know you've been down. I'm preaching to somebody, I know you've been down, but the word of God for you today is, you can bounce back. I know this season of your life has been uh, 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 altered lifestyles have been altered for families and, and employment and financial situations. And even our kids, our children, amen, going to school online virtually, that's tough. Trying to keep your attention and the attention span has, has shortened. I know it's been tough. Lifestyles have been altered, not vacationing, can't go out to eat, can't do what you, you normally uh, uh, would do. Amen. Grandparents can't not hug grandkids and uh, afraid that kids may transmit the virus to, to
to the elderly, y'all. I know it's not where you've been or even where you are, but how many of us know it's where you're going? It's where you're headed. In other words, it's the comeback that counts. And what I read to you this morning, amen, out of the book of Acts chapter 20, is one of the greatest comeback stories in the Bible. The apostle Paul was on a missionary journey, and he was actually going back over to some of the churches that he had already planted and started to strengthen them. And so he went through Macedonia, then the Bible said he spent some time in Greece, and he came back through Macedonia, spent some time in Philippi. And then in our text this morning, Acts chapter 20, verse 7, he then spent some time in Troas. And in Troas, uh, the Bible says he, he spent time with the saints. He had already established this church. He was there now for, for nurture, man. I'm, I need to grow you as a disciple. I grow you into a disciple, from membership to discipleship. And so in Troas, they didn't meet in the cathedrals because the church had just been established. Come on, let you, let you come on, relate this to our situation. They didn't meet in the cathedrals or, or the local churches, but they met in people's homes. And the believers in Troas were meeting uh, uh, in a home on the third floor of the, of, of the house, like some who are watching me. Amen. You in church but you're meeting at home. And as they were meeting in that home, the saints came together, and the Bible said they had unity. They were breaking bread together. Amen. Which is a reference to the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And they put the focus on, watch this, the crucifixion uh, uh, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so sitting in the window, watch this, that was a, a young man a youth. Hear me, young people. His name was Eutychus. And his name in, in, in the Greek meant fortunate. And Eutychus was, was, was sitting in the window, and as Paul was preaching, the Bible says that Eutychus fell asleep, and then Eutychus fell out of the window. And as he fell out of a window because he fell asleep in church, now, now, Eutychus is down in the street. I said he's down. And I want y'all to see the challenge of this child that was in the window. He's in church with his grandparents and parents, and they're praising the Lord. He's sitting in the window, and while they are praising the Lord, he falls asleep. And he fell out of the window uh, onto the street, and the text says that Eutychus is dead. Now, check him out, y'all. He's disinterested, number one. He's disconnected, and now he's dead. He's at his grandmother's church, and he's disinterested. He's disconnected. He's down, and he's dead because he was at his grandmother's church. And he felt like, I guess, he couldn't relate. He didn't like the old songs that they were singing. He did not like the way, I guess, the preacher was preaching. He, he didn't like... The flavor of the church wasn't contemporary enough. And amen. And so while they were having church, uh, uh, he's sitting in the window. And the Bible says that, the, I guess, the worship service put him to sleep. And while he was asleep, he fell out of the window onto the ground. And the Bible says he was dead. I mean, this reminds me of the 21st century church, even here in 2021. Uh, 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 where most of our children, when it comes to church, I understand. We got to relate to these kids. I'm all for that. I know sometimes they seem disinterested, disconnected, down, and dead to spiritual things, especially during this pandemic when everything has to, to be done virtually. I don't know about y'all, but I'm all zoomed out as well. So, so, so when he was down, when he was down and needed to be lifted, you know who raised him? I want y'all to see that. I want you to see this. When he fell out of that window, fell onto the ground, and died, I want you to know who raised him. Who raised him was not the world, but who raised him back to life was the church. I think I just said something there. So, so now, he, he hasn't always been down, but he's down now. 
He used to be at a high level in church. He used to be at a ministry with a preacher that can preach. He used to be uh, in an enlightened environment, but now he's in the streets. He's down. He, he, haven't all, he hadn't always been down, y'all. At some point, he had been at another level. Fortunate. He was fortunate to be there. Remember, that's his name. And, and y'all, even the fortunate can fall. And there he is, down in the street. He doesn't see what he used to see, doesn't hear what he used to hear. He's not exposed to what he used to be exposed to. He's, he's not uh, experiencing what he used to experience because he's down in the street. He doesn't hear the sermons he used to hear. He doesn't see the saints he used to see. I wish y'all can relate to this. He's down at home. He's down in school. He's down in society. He's down in standards. He's down in morals. He's in the streets, y'all. He hasn't been like that. He's down. Have y'all Y'all ever been down and out, amen, in the dumps, and you don't know which way to turn? Let me tell y'all something. Don't ever, ever think that the church is not relevant. Because, amen, even coming out of this pandemic, we're dealing with a world that is down. We're dealing with people that is downtrodden, down in spirits. We're dealing with a world, amen, that's down in every level you can imagine. But I stopped by today to tell you, church, get ready. I'm going to say this one more time. Church, get ready because this is the time now and we're getting ready to enter into a season is that if the world ever needed the church, the world is going to need the church now because you know who's going to lift up the spirits of those who've been downtrodden. You know who's going to lift up those who have fallen by the wayside. I tell you who's going to do it. It's going to be the Lord Jesus Christ coming out of the church. And I know we all ready to get back in here. I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready not just to fellowship, but I'm ready to get the work because God has taught me a lesson and has taught us a lesson that it's time for the church to be the church. And let me tell you what's going to lift your spirit. Don't you turn your back on the church. Don't you turn your back on the things of God. Don't you turn your back on prayer and fasting. Don't you turn your back on the Holy Spirit. Is there anybody here that knows that it's the church that's going to do it? Jesus is going to do it. God is going to do it. God is getting ready to take us back to the old landmark because had it not been for the Lord on our side, we wouldn't be alive today. Amen. The church, the things of God. Now, now, now watch this man. Now, now I'm preaching. Now, 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 now watch this man, Judah, because here's what, here's what I want you to understand. Just because you're down, hear me now, just because you're down, amen, amen, uh, mean, uh, it, that means you have to stay down. See, when someone pushes you down, uh, somebody suggests that's on them. But if you stay there, that's on you. Listen, you may have pushed me down. But I don't have to stay down. This world may have pushed you down. This, this season may have pushed you down. But, but the word of God for you today is you don't have to stay down. Because there's a difference between a knockdown and a knockout. Amen. See, 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 see. You may have knocked me down, but you didn't knock me out. And if I can get up in a decent time, I can still get the victory. Watch this here. Uh, a bouncing back, bouncing back always depends on what you made of. Let me say this one more time. Bouncing back always depends on what you're made of. You throw down an egg, it's going to crack because it doesn't have the right stuff in it. You throw down a vase, it's not going to bounce back because it's hard because it doesn't have the right stuff in it. If you throw down a ball full of air, it's going to bounce back because it's got the right stuff in it. Because what is air? Air is the pneuma, the ruach, the Holy Spirit. And all I'm trying to tell you, if you have the Spirit of God inside of your life, if you have the Holy Spirit in you is there anybody here that knows greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world it's going to take the things of God to help you and I to bounce back come on look at your neighbor say neighbor don't give up on God because he sure won't give up on you Eutychus this young man didn't did nobody push him down this young man fell on his own and y'all, Paul is up preaching, and it's a church at another level. It's a, it's a good ministry, and there he is sitting in the window, and he failed. You know why he failed? Because he's at the right location, but he's in the wrong position. He's at a good church. He's got a good pastor and preacher, but look at where he's positioned. 
He's over in a windowsill. He's not in the middle of what's going on in the ministry. Amen. He, he's on the periphery. He, he's on the outer balance. He's, he's living life on the edge. He's between the church and the world. He's got one foot in and one foot out. Here's a young man who's comfortable at the night scene, but then he's also comfortable at church. Y'all, He's living life on the edge. He's positioned himself in the window. And see, it's not only the position that he's taken, but it's the condition that he's in. He's at the church, but he's sleeping through what's going on. He's unconscious to the word of God, to the light shining around him, to the, to the focus of Jesus because he's in the sanctuary, but he's sleeping. And let me tell y'all something here. This word works. I'm, let me just pause here for a moment. Y'all, the word of God works. Prayer works. Fasting works. Tithing works. Being in the fellowship works. Is there anybody who knows that the Holy Spirit works? I tell folk, this thing works if you just work it. But you got to get off the periphery and amen. Quit living life on the edge and get both feet in here and both feet in the things of God. Start fasting and praying. And I tell you, the word of God will not return to you void because there's power in prayer. There's power in praise. There's power in worship. Anybody know no prayer, no power. Little prayer a little power but much prayer much power it works if you work it well who was it James Brown said let it do what it do it works see y'all we don't work see 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 listen preacher even spiritual saints we all fall even spirit filled saints fall you know because sometimes we you know, that's just part of life, part of the journey. Even though those who are involved in the work of ministry, everybody falls. But here's the difference. Hear me, those listening to me. Here's the difference. Uh, 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 I got a choice. I have a choice. Listen, listen. I'd rather fall uh, in the middle of what God is doing than out of what God is doing. Uh, I'd rather take my chances uh, staying on the ship than trying to jump in the ocean and try to save myself. I tell folk all the time, I'd rather take my chances with the vaccine than to take my chances with the virus. So if I fall, I'm not going to fall due to fear, but I'm going to fall because I took a chance at life. And I'm telling somebody today, take a chance at life and not death. And it's not just for you, but I'm doing this also for my brother man and my sister girl. For the young and the old. See, he failed. But he didn't fall out. He falls out of the window uh, 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 of opportunity. He had an opportunity for salvation. He had an opportunity for deliverance. He had an opportunity for healing, for prosperity, for peace, for success. But y'all, he didn't get it. You know why? Because he fell out of opportunity. Watch this young man. Because he's showing up where everybody is. He's wearing, he's wearing uh, uh, the same clothes, packing the same Bible. He has the same bracelet. Y'all, watch this. Eutychus fall out of the window. Watch what happened. The apostle Paul goes down, says, don't be uh, alarmed. This, watch, look what Paul says. Paul says, this young man is not dead. He's alive. Well, my question is, because I read it to y'all, who declared him dead? Who said he was dead? You know what I believe? I believe that when he fell out of the window, the saints ran over to the window and looked out of the window and said, oh, he's dead. That, 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 that's what I believe because the text says that there was only one person that left the sanctuary went down to the streets and that was the preacher that was the apostle Paul now, 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 now watch this because some people are too distant to make a diagnosis um, let me try it again see some people see are too distant to make a diagnosis the rest of the people are standing uh, 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 on the third level saying he's dead so they are what too distant to make a diagnosis too distant to come to the right determination so how are you going to tell me that I can't make it and you don't even know who I am 
I mean, you haven't even talked to me or had a conversation with me, sat down with me, communicated with me, and let me help somebody. Stop letting folk who are distant from you determine what's going to happen to you. As a matter of fact, you know how I know you're going to make it because uh, 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 Eutychus made it. If Eutychus made it, we can make it. Somebody came from the top down. Amen. Somebody from the top went down to the bottom so somebody at the bottom can go to the top. We just celebrated that a few minutes ago with communion. Jesus came down from heaven, died for my sins and your sins, and amen, was raised from the dead that you and I may have life and have it everlasting. And y'all, if he chooses to do nothing else for us, how many of us have enough appreciation and enough praise and enough faith to believe that if God do nothing else for us, God does nothing else for us, he's already done enough. How many of us, we are excited about our salvation, that somebody left heaven, came to earth to die for my sins. I said somebody left heaven came to earth to die for my sins because for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life can anybody get excited about Calvary about the blood of the lamb anybody know the blood still works anybody know there's power in the blood anybody understands that the blood has power power wonder working power is there anybody here know that I can plead the blood and the blood will clean me up the blood will strengthen me. The blood will help me. That is my weapon against the enemy. I got to learn that the blood still has power. He came. Okay, listen, listen, listen. Paul left the third level, went down. Look how Paul helped this young man. The Bible says he did not damn him. He did not, he did not chastise this young man. The Bible says that Paul, when he went down there, Paul hugged him. It says Paul hugged him. Look how Paul raised him. Paul did not try to bring his history up. Paul did not uh, uh, try to bring up his past. Paul didn't what, condemn him for what, where he was sitting. But the Bible says he embraced him. Mm, I want y'all to see this correlation. He hugged him. See so, y'all, we have too many people that think they can raise our children, raise the downtrodden. They don't need a message. They need a hug. They need love. Who was that said even a thug needs a hug? And you know why Paul believed he can do that? Because Paul knew what it was like when he failed. See, those of us who have already fallen before in the past, we know what it's like to be down. So Paul was able to identify. In chapter 9, Paul fell off the what? off the boat and he was down but here comes uh, 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 Barnabas alongside him picked him up gave him some direction and Paul was so messed up that even the church didn't want to take him in and Barnabas says if uh, if you trust me then that that, that, that if you trust me that this man has changed and he brought him on in to the fellowship when Paul failed uh, when Paul failed somebody else picked him up and Paul said since somebody else picked me up I'm going to turn around and go pick somebody else up because Paul said I know what it means to be down I know what it means to be without I know what it means to have pain in your life and nobody's there I know what it means to be flat on your back and I had nobody to turn to I know what it means amen to have all of this stress on my life I know what it means y'all to have this and I know what it meant to me when Barnabas came to me and said I know they are talking about you but here's one person that's going to come alongside you I got your back I got your back I'm your advocate I'm going to be your friend I'm not worried about your past I just want to let you know that God's got something better in store for you is there anybody here can look at the world and see pain and not criticize but lend a helping hand because the Bible says he's a God of compassion that's our mission see see listen 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 y'all uh, uh, don't forget what God raised you up from it's easy to forget where you came from it's easy amen that, that I know somebody was down and then somebody helped to raise you up see y'all to feel that pain to feel their pain let me park here. To feel their pain, to identify with their issues as believers, that's our mantra. That's our mission. That's our story. That's our testimony. See, y'all, that's what this communion was all about. 
When God says, I'm going to save you, he said, I'm going to relieve you. Watch this. Of the punishment that's due to you. I'm not criticizing you. I'm just going to relieve you. And substitute you for my son, which was all motivated by love. See, see, see let, me, let me tell you all something. Listen to me, everybody. You don't know love until you know pain. Uh, let me see. See, that's why some people can't stay together. Because you only know pleasure. But see, you don't know pain. Because real love comes with pain. See, when you can tolerate the pain, that's how you know you have love in your heart. I wish y'all get this. See, you can snuggle together, but you can't struggle together. See, I don't know if I'm really, see, I don't know if I really love you until we, what, face a conflict and see how I respond and see how you respond. That's how I know my parents love me because when I messed up, they kept on providing for me. That's how I know I love Mackenzie Morgan because when they mess up, I'm still going to provide for them. That's how I know that I still love my friends. Amen. That when they hurt me, I'm still going to help them. That's how I know that Doris still loves me because when I mess up she keeps on loving me that's how I know most of all that's how I know God loves me that when I sin he still died for me can anybody get up and give God a shout of praise and say that I know you love me because when it should have been me on that cross you died for my sins you don't know love until you know pain Come on, somebody. That's what real love is all about. See, Paul loved Eutychus. He didn't worry about what he'd been through. He just saw his pain and said, I love you, young man. Eutychus is down in the street. He had access to a good church. Amen. He could, but, 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 but guess what? He had access to a good church, to a good pastor, preacher, good fellowship, good members, good usher board, good choir, good all of that. And it was time for him to get up because the gospel is about renewal and restoration. Let me just throw these out. This is how he got restored. See, first of all, the Bible says he was determined, which means, I'm going to just throw these points out. He got up. Uh, everybody say he got up. Paul, did, Paul didn't pick him up. The Bible said after he hugged him and showed him love in the midst of his pain, that Eutychus got up. And that's my word to somebody right now. You just need to get up. See, God loves you. Just get up. I know you're having a pity party. Just get up. I know you've been depressed, but just get up. I know you're feeling bitter and angry, but just get up. I know you don't know how you're going to make it, but just get up. Can anybody just get up? I'm going to determine and make a decision in my spirit that I'm going to get up because I know I have the love of Jesus all over me. And if he loves me, great is he inside of me than he that is outside of me. And I know that if the Lord is for me, he's more than the whole world against me just get up look at your neighbor say neighbor get up just get on up y'all get up sometimes that's all some people need to hear just Eutychus felt loved and he got up then secondly he went up everybody say he went up I'm trying to show you how to come out of this fire uh, he went up where did he go when he went up when he got up he went to church <laughs> he went back to the church Y'all, after he got both vaccines, he went back to the church. After he got both shots of the one J and J, he went back to church. Come on, y'all, I'm preaching Bible now. See, y'all, that's the direction because what sense does it make to get up and stay in the streets? What sense does it make for God to raise you up and give you another chance, help you to bounce back, and you stay at the same level that you own, y'all? Can anybody look at somebody and say, I'm getting up, and I'm going to the Lord's house? See, y'all, he had to put that in his mind and in his spirit. See, y'all, he had to, see, see, why is it that some people never get to their destination God has for them? It's because of decision. See, decision leads to destination. See, you don't just get there on your own. You got to make a decision. 
Somebody says, sow a thought, reap a word. Sow a word, reap an action. Sow an action, reap a habit. Sow a habit, reap a character. Uh, 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 sow character, reap a destiny. But my destiny is tied to my thoughts. It's tied to my decision. And you have to make a, you have to make a, a conscious uh, a decision that this is the last day I'm going to be down. I've had, you know, this is the last day I'm done crying. I'm ready to get up and go to the Lord's house. I'm ready to get back to God's business. I'm ready to go back, go back to work. I'm ready to get, watch this. Then third, how did he get restored? The Bible says he ate up. Everybody said ate up. It says that he went to the table and they broke bread. That's a reference to the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's really communion. He goes back to the church, but this time he's not in the windowsill. This time he's at the table. He, he, he's not on the sideline, but he's in the thick of things. Because he learned in that season of quarantine what it was all about and who really was on his side. See, some people, see, some people, uh, 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 see, when you eat up and when you partake of the, of the, of the meat of God's word and the milk of God's word, amen, how many of us know that provides the, the spiritual strength that we need in order to do what Eutychus did. But here's the last thing, and this is my favorite part, because y'all know I'm a family preacher. I love this. The Bible says, the text says, and they took him home alive. I love that. Hey, 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 they took him home alive. Remember, he's dead, but he's got a hug. He's got love. He's got embraced, raised up, got back up in the church. Amen. He ate. He fellowship. And, and what did the saints do? They took him home alive. Oh, we got quiet. Okay. See, see he's been in the streets. But then he, uh, he came into the sanctuary. Or went into the sanctuary. But now they're taking him home alive. And Eutychus, watch this. He left God's house. Went to his house, and that's why he's still alive. I want y'all to see something. See, you know what's killing us is where we go between our house and God's house. Between what we do at our house and God's house. Y'all know there's some stuff killing us. Because I really believe that this whole season, this pandemic, was about restoring God's most prized institution. That's the family. Goes the family, so goes the world. And families had to come, grip, had to, come to grips with that. You had to talk to each other, communicate. We're going to make it or we're not going to make it. It's make a break for us. And amen. I believe that singles had to come to grips with, with, with some things. Because guess what? All of us had to even face ourselves. Amen. Because God wants us to go home alive because the salvation of this world that nobody ever talks about. Politicians don't talk about it. And even the church doesn't talk about it enough that we got to start talking about home. We got to start talking about family because goes the family. So goes the world. God said in Genesis one, let us make man in our own image, in our own likeness. Let us who us God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy Spirit, God to make what to make what let's replicate us. Let's replicate. I like us, God says. I like God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And I need a father, a mother, and children. I need the family. So the family replicates God in the earth. So what? We can preserve our posterity and add credence to the word as it relates to the world. Because the revelations of God and the work of God, he wants to channel that through the church. But you can't have a strong church unless unless we have strong families and strong relationships. Mm. Well, y'all just give me one minute. I'm two minutes and I'm done. I'm done. Yeah, just give me three minutes to talk to my sisters. Because this is real. I, that's why I started this marriage series. It's on the website. Go to it. It's on the mobile app. I've talked to so many singles because people had to come to grips with themselves. And listen, nobody has a problem with you taking a man home. 
But if you take a man home, take him home alive. Okay. Because we have too many sisters who take dead men home. Yo, this family is, fall, family is falling apart. Look at the commercials that you see on television now. See, yo, the fa- listen, listen. See, we have too many sisters who take dead men home. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, 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 uh. Don't act like you didn't know he was dead. Okay, well, how do I know how a dead man looks? Dead man don't talk. Oh, well, Pastor, I never can get him to talk to me because dead man don't talk. I'm pouring out, what, what, dead men are insensitive. I'm pouring out my heart to you and, and none of this moves you. He's dead. Dead men can't hear. I've been telling you this and that and all that. He can't hear y'all because why? He's not alive. But here's what I'm trying to tell you. Before you take any man home, and for that matter, for, uh, brothers too, before you take any woman home, this is how we, what, preserve God's posterity is that we have to take men home alive. We got to take women home who are alive because when Eutychus went home, he was alive. And now that he is alive, guess what? He is able to say what God wants him to say, do what God wants him to do. He's able to behave the way God wants him to behave. Why? Because he went home alive. There's a song that we sing in our church, and it's called, And Are We Yet Alive? And that's what I want to ask somebody this morning. And are we yet alive? Anybody alive? Oh, I know y'all been through a pandemic, but are you alive? I'm closing here, but are you alive? I know you might have lost your job, but are you alive? I know your family may be having some trouble, but are you alive? I know you may feel like you're lonely, but are you alive? I know you had the virus, but are you alive? Is there anybody here that knows wherever there's life, there's hope? And as long as I got breath in my body, I can rise up above what I'm going through through are you alive are you alive if you alive you ought to give God a shout of praise the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people and the way that the world will know that we are coming back that we are bouncing back we got to make some noise we got to speak up come on somebody we got to speak up we got to open up our mouth we got to open up our hearts. We have to open up our souls. We got to give God a shout of praise. We, we got to be able to lift up our hands. We got to be able to let the world know that I'm on heaven's side. And I'm going to give God praise. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, O creatures here below. Praise the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. If you are alive, there's hope. There's hope if you are alive. You're alive. You have a shot. You have a chance. You have a choice. If you have breath in your body, you have it like Eutychus. The love is there. Somebody loves you. There is a church who, that cares about you. You have what it takes to bounce back to come back you don't know who God's going to raise to be your answered prayer your favor is more powerful than money you may not have the money but if you stay with God and you trust him God will send the right person in your path that's got the answer to your prayer to provide what you don't have and your favor is real you just got to get up You got to get up, shake the dust off. I'm done crying. I'm done being depressed and oppressed. I'm done with all this negative feelings I have and negative stuff I've been here. I'm done with it. And I'm ready. I'm ready to go now. I'm ready to go to my destiny. It's in my thinking. Is there anybody here that you alive? You've been dead for a year. This pandemic done put us all asleep. I know. Then put us in a whole different stratosphere. But the word of God for you today is that you have life. 
And it's the comeback that counts. We know your pain. We love you. We know your pain. And since we know your pain, we're here to help you. Don't go through this alone or by yourself. We are the body of Christ, unified. If there is one today, I want to offer you a couple of things. First thing I want to offer somebody is salvation. That's where it really starts. And I want you to just ask Christ to come into your life. Save me. Lord, save me. I believe you died on that cross and God raised you from the dead. Come into my life. Forgive me of my sins, Lord. I'm going to live for you forever. I'm making that choice because I believe that you died on the cross. God raised you from the dead. And now you are my personal Lord and Savior. I believe without a doubt that I am saved. Somebody just accepted Christ. Come on, give God a hand of praise. Listen. Secondly, offer somebody a church home. Is there anybody that needs a church home? Yes, you can join church. If there's anyone here, just get up right where you are. If there's anyone that's watching me, just go to our website. Push that tab. I am new. Fill that information out. Send it on in. Somebody will get in touch with you. We offer you Christ. We offer you the church. As we extend the invitation to Christian discipleship. Those who are here, just stand with me. Others are going to keep worship God and giving. Get ready. Yeah. Make that decision. Gracious God, we thank you as we continue to worship you in giving. God, we thank you that every seed that is planted shall be used for the uplifting and the edification of your divine, precious, and powerful kingdom. God, we thank you to God that as we plant seeds, that you'll bless every personal financial situation that someone is going through. We declare every household is blessed as well as your house. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say together, amen. Those who are here, the ushers, amen, we're still practicing social distancing. We are encouraging everyone, amen, to give online. But if you're giving in the service, the ushers do have a basket. And on your way out, you can just drop the basket. We don't want everyone to touch the basket. So we're not going to pass the basket. Those who are watching us online, uh, it's right there before you, different ways to give. You can snail mail it to P.O. Box 806. You can cash app it. You, uh, 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 you name it. You can text your giving to that number that's appearing on your screen. 
Uh, you can also go to the website and give. God bless you. May God keep you. Don't forget to check all of our announcements on our Facebook page as well as the church website. Amen. Don't forget that our marriage uh, Bible study, it is on the mobile app. Uh, it's also in the archives on our Facebook page. It was Friday night. I want to encourage all families, couples, and singles, please view in once a month. It's on there for this month. So God bless you, and may God keep you is our prayers. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, abide. Be with us all now henceforth and forevermore. Let the people of God say together, amen. God bless you and go in peace. Have a great week.